Thank you for kind invitation and having me opportunity to share our knowledge and experience in this course. Today, I will talk about endoscopy diagnosis to decide treatment indication of early gastric cancer. At first, I would like to explain about difference between indication and curability. Indication is determined whether to perform ESD or surgery before treatment. So, indication is basically determined by clinical findings, meaning endoscopic findings. While curativity is determined by histological finding, whether there is a no risk of lymph node metastasis or not. If histological findings do not fulfill curative resection criteria, additional surgery is recommended to the patients. Indication is determined based on histological type, tumor size, depth of tumor invasion, or presence of ulcer scar. And these are all endoscopic findings. Some doctor says that T1B 500 micron is an indication of endoscopic treatment, but this is wrong because we cannot measure the length of tumor invasion by endoscopy. So, indication of ESD for early gastric cancer is all T1A intramucosal. An important change in the latest guideline for indication of endoscopy treatment is a all indication that were previously called expanded criteria became absolute indication of ESD for early gastric cancer. Because favorable long-term outcome was proven for 470 patients with early gastric cancer larger than 2 cm or a region with ulcer scar, and 259 patients with undifferentiated type cancer, region smaller than 2 cm without ulcer scar. But anyway, to determine the indication of endoscopic treatment or surgery, we have to evaluate four findings, histological type, tumor size, tumor depth, and presence of ulcer or scar by endoscopic finding. Histological type is usually determined by histological examination of biopsy specimen. So among these findings, I am talking about how to make diagnosis of tumor extension, size, and tumor depth in this presentation. Tumor extent is usually made diagnosis by chromoendoscopy or by magnifying NBI. First of all, proper preparation and adequate air insufflation is very important to make correct diagnosis. Without these conditions, we cannot make accurate diagnosis in such regions. Moreover, even use of chromoendoscopy or magnifying endoscopy, if the mucus or bubble covered the surface of the region, correct diagnosis is difficult. So, proper preparation and observing condition is the first step to accurate staging diagnosis. We have conducted a randomized control trial to see difference of diagnostic accuracy for tumor extension of early gastric cancer between chromoendoscopy and magnifying NBI. In this study, patients were randomized into chromoendoscopy or magnifying NBI group and proximal tumor margin was delineated by each method. And biopsy specimen were taken from 5 mm outside and inside of the tumor margin. And when the inside was a cancer and the outside as a non-cancer, it was defined as an accurate diagnosis. Otherwise, the diagnosis was regarded as inaccurate. 
We have enrolled 170 patients for each arm and found that the chroma endoscopy and magnifying NBI showed similar accuracy for diagnosis of tumor extent of a l i g a c y cancer. Of course, diagnostic accuracy must be better than white light endoscopy, but、uh, between the two endoscopy diagnostic methods, we could not find the stati- statistically,、uh, we could not find statistically significant difference. Subset analysis shows that、uh, there is no significant benefit of magnifying NBI over chromoendoscopy for specific subgroup, but for flat region, magnifying NBI tended to be more accurate compared to chromoendoscopy. However, the, it does not impact for improvement of overall endoscopy accuracy. For example, there was superficial elevated region in the anterior wall of the gastric body. And chromoendoscopy contrasted the nodular change of the region like this. However, the region has flat extension toward the greater curvature side. And magnifying NBI revealed the flat extension of the region. By presence of irregular vessels and demarcation line. So, it is very important to pay attention to not only morphological change, but also to slight color difference in the surrounding mucosa to make diagnosis of region extent. And magnifying NBI is especially useful for diagnosis of such flat region. In our actual practice, we usually assess the region extent first by white light endoscopy. Then we apply indigo carmine to overview the region. If there is a part of unclear margin, we assess the area with magnifying NBI. In this case, it is better to observe the surrounding area first. And gradually and continuously observe the surrounding mucosa toward the region. Then determine the tumor boundary. If there is a still part of unclear margin, we then take mapping biopsy to confirm the extent of the region. I would like to show one example for margin delineation. The region was informed to exist at the gastric angle. So, our junior colleague immediately performed magnifying NBI. So, we see there is something abnormal, but we could not recognize overall characteristic of the region. So, I changed and observed the overview of the region by conventional endoscopy. So we found that the slightly elevated area here. And then we focus on some margin of the region and evaluate surrounding mucosa first and toward the region so that we could determine the region boundary by presence of Irregular vessel like this. And then we put marking accordingly. Then the region was completely removed and blocked by ESD technique. Next, I will explain how to make diagnosis of depth of tumor invasion of a l i g a c y cancers. One simple method to estimate the depth of tumor invasion is a morphology. When the region is totally flat, it is indicated that the 80% of the region are intramucosal. But for other morphology, 
We have to estimate depth of tumor invasion in some methods. One retrospective study from Korea suggested that the morphological assessment in white light image showed better diagnostic accuracy compared to EUS. But when should we use EUS for diagnosis of depth of tumor invasion? Tsuji E. et al. suggested these strategies to make diagnosis of tumor depth by conventional endoscopy and EUS. According to their data, they found that the four region made diagnosis as intramucosal in conventional white light endoscopy. 80% was diagnosed as intramucosal in EUS. And most of them were actually intramucosal cancer in histology. Therefore, the performance of EUS does not impact much for the outcome of clinically diagnosed intramucosal cancer. However, in region diagnosed as submucosal cancer, about 40% of the region was downstaged as intramucosal cancer by EUS. And most of them were intramucosal cancer in histology. Therefore, in regions suspected as submucosal cancer in white light endoscopy, we may avoid over-surgery with use of EUS. So, in such region, performance of EUS is recommended. One useful finding to make diagnosis of depth of tumor invasion is reported recently. This is called non-extension sign. In intramucosal region, with air in insufflated extensively, the region become flattened. While in some mucosal invasive region, when air is extensively insufflated, the region is protruded into the lumen, lifting the surrounding non-neoplastic mucosa upward at the margin of the region by invaded cancerous tissue. It is reported that uh, this sign has a very good accuracy for diagnosis of tumor depth of early gastric cancer. So we are now trying to validate this result in a randomized control trial. So anyway, I explain endoscopic diagnosis of tumor extent and tumor depth. At last, I would explain how to make histological diagnosis of tumor extent and tumor depth in resected specimen. Accurate histological diagnosis of resected specimen is as important as pretreatment diagnosis and endoscopic resection technique. To evaluate curativity of resection, the size and the depth of tumor invasion is evaluated in histological finding. After the resection, specimen is pinned on the cork board and fixed into formalin. Then it is sectioned into every 2 to 3 mm strips and taken a photo. At this time, an image of a measurable scale must be taken together. An extent of cancerous tissue on the section strips are drawn in the photo to measure the histological size. And at this moment, it is important to stretch the resected specimen adequately to represent endoscopic size. Because histological size is a part of curative resection criteria, if the specimen is overstretched and the size exceeds these criteria, the resection may be overdiagnosed as non-curative resection. Moreover, adequate section interval is also important. Because 
if the section interval is too large, an area with some mucosal invasion or lymphatic involvement may be missed. And non-curative resection may be underestimated as curative resection. In summary, the previous expanded indication became absolute indication in the latest guideline. Pretreatment endoscopy diagnosis of histological type, size, depth of tumor invasion, and presence or absence of ulcer or scar is important to decide treatment indication. And post-treatment histological diagnosis is also important to justify the curativity of the resection. Muchas gracias.